The season 3 trailer, followed by Embark's announced rank changes, has taken our community by storm, and we have had a very bizarre weekend, split with the excitement of the new Japanese theme and map, and on the other side, the lingering feeling of emptiness when looking at my 600 hours of rank cash out experience that I can now throw out the window. I initially had the intention to make a video explaining why that switch was a terrible idea and why terminal attack should please never be the sole focus of the competitive aspect of the finals, but that would actually be counterproductive. No matter what we think of the switch, no matter how much we loved rank cash out, season 3 is going to be what it's said to be, and we have to live with that and keep pushing forward. So on that note, Today we will try to sharpen our tools in anticipation of the start of the new rank season and get ourselves ready for terminal attack. Let's take a few minutes to understand the mode in depth and try to see where things are going for our upcoming meta. Terminal attack mode changes. Before anything, I think it is important to note that the mode we currently know for terminal attack is not exactly what we're going to have for season 3. Embark has already confirmed changes that should give this mode a much more refined and sharpened competitive look. As of today, the confirmed changes will be the following. Requiring the attacking team to interact with the terminal to deliver it, rather than just throwing the key in from a distance. Warm-up zones that give defenders more time to prepare and strategize. Playing the different objective scenarios in the same sequence in each half of attacking and defending to make a more balanced experience. And resetting the map destruction when teams switch from attacking to defending. Those changes will at the very least place terminal attack in a state that gives it enough credibility to be called a rank mode. Which, let's be honest, is a great start. When you launch a Valorant game, you do expect the play of the round to be the same map no matter what side you're on. When you launch a Rainbow Six round, you do expect wall breaches to be repaired when you switch from attack to defense, etc. Added to the new weapons, gadgets and specializations coming for the season, we can surely expect that the game is already launched on its course to become a stable and staple search and destroy specialist. What is terminal attack? All right, so now that we've discussed the mode structure changes, maybe it would be good to review what exactly is terminal attack before we can determine the upcoming meta. Terminal attack is a search and destroy mode. The game starts with two teams of five, one attack team and one defense team. There is no healing, except if your health pool goes under 100 and will only recharge after 10 seconds to a maximum of 100. There is no reanimation. The attack team has to place an encryption key in one of two available terminals, defend the point while it is being hacked, or kill all the enemy team. The mode is based on a best of 7 rounds. There, simple enough. Well, maybe not, because this is the finals. The finals is chaos, and chaos should probably not be defined so strictly. In finals terms, Terminal Attack is an explosive attack team whom will surely stay a 5 stack as long as possible to target 1 point rather than 2, will dump the encryption key to start as soon as possible, and a following of 30 to 45 seconds of madness, gadgets being used one after the other, and 90% of both teams dying. Yet again, it is probably wrong to simplify it to that. With the new rank approach added on top of the current version of it, players will learn and adapt. Players will switch from a coin limited number of respawns to a one single life approach. They will learn to protect their health. They will learn to protect the cash out without the possibility of restealing in case they got finessed. They will learn all the little details of every single map to give you the best defending angle of the terminal in prevention of the incoming attacking team. We will learn to play as 5 rather than 3 and combo our gadgets together rather than learn to use them to make your personal score better. Players whom have always had an issue with focusing on the objective will now be able to rejoice as the game is moving from an objective over kill era to a kill over objective, etc, etc. This here is the sprout already planted of our player's mindset slowly switching from cash out to terminal attack. And with the switch, with the better understanding, with learning from our mistakes and stacking successes, comes the possibility to make this a positive change to our favorite game. And let's be honest, a change had to happen for the finals to keep growing. Let's discuss meta. We've talked about what terminal attack is, 
what changes have been announced and how we can expect the appeal of the mode to grow over the coming weeks. Now that we have a strong foundation to be able to stand on to discuss the future, let's start to apply that knowledge to forecast what the upcoming meta is going to look like so that you can already start training properly to reach Diamond as fast as possible upon Season 3. The most obvious point to start on would probably be to discuss the team classes and how to bring a balance to your game. On paper, it seems that Heavy will remain a very strong class, especially with the new grab tool being added to their kit. Lights are now extremely powerful, if not the best class. Their time to kill is shorter than other classes on most weapons, their hitbox is smaller and therefore less prone to getting hit by lost bullets, they have disengaged gadgets that will very much come in handy, and they can play the sneaky card better than any other class. Mediums, on their side, are not seeing their best season. While the double katana seems fun and well suited to the terminal attack mode, the rest of its support kit is rendered useless. If no other option is offered to replace the healing beam and the defibrillator, it will remain a class of the past era of the finals and will simply seemingly fall off the meta wagon. Considering that, we can see heavies as the shield, lights as the sword, and medium as... The kid who arrives at class with everyone in class seated to take their exam, saying, wait, there was a test today? Based off of that, a reasonable team formation would be heavy, heavy, light, 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 or heavy, 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 light, light, or heavy, heavy, light, light, medium. And that was quite a mouthful. In details, two heavies and three lights bring an offensive edge to an overall quite sustainable team, which would be very fitting for an attack round, while three heavies and two lights bring the added layer of defense and aggro that a defending team needs to push through a siege state. The heavies would need to prepare an array of defensive skills, but an easy combo would be a grab skill plus charge, as they can disable any players trying to disarm the hack. Shields to protect the lights through their flank attacks could also have great value. The lights, on their side, will need to arm up with tools to melt the time to kill to the smallest possible value to ensure a quick surgical hit on enemy defenses. Once the kill is made, they need to disappear in the shadows or jump out of the fight as fast and efficiently as possible without dying themselves. Consider that light classes can regenerate up to 66% of their entire health pool. Always, if they manage to flee a fight they entered, their threat remains present to a very near value as what they were before entering the fight, which is true only for this class. Players will also need to learn to focus, and focus correctly. A team callout to finish the light with the sword is critical to the survival of the entire team, and if misheard, or simply not followed through, could spell disaster for any round. Another key aspect of terminal attack that we all need to learn to use to our advantage is that rounds are phased. We're no longer playing against multiple teams that could trigger or use a third party type of approach. It is now you against them. As such, once the objective is clarified, getting to it is not a straight run up anymore. It is a phased and decided line of actions with an expected outcome that is being played out for specific reasons. Sending a light to point B to make some noise while the remaining four push aggressively on A to win precious time that the defending team will lack because they fell for the fake is much more complex to come to life than just charging in a straight line, putting two mesh shields down and covering the thief for six seconds until he gets a last second steal to win the game. But it is also going to be much more rewarding. It is going to require a lot more thinking and a lot more understanding of the game mechanics, but it is also going to give sense to our grind and define the player level in much more minute details. It is important to discuss the 5v5 aspect in a bit more details. Many players, like me, 6.3 seconds after Embark made the announcement of the change, were calling out the fact that it is already hard ensuring team play, communication and alignment with a team of three, how are we going to do that with a team of five? And that is a very valid point to consider. Terminal attack without team coordination is just five low life idiots with an average of 12 seconds of play for three minutes of dead time cam. But what if we were simply all wrong? What if the reason we have had to face low team coordination is exactly because we have been used to play rank on cash out? Cash out can work without team communication. It isn't advised, but considering that most players do it this way, it is surely doable. Terminal attack? Not so much, right? 
So what if, upon the start of a new season, we start losing every round because of the sheer chaos that your team is putting on the battlefield mounts up to nothing? What if this is exactly what triggers players to turn on their microphones and start working together? We've all experimented that two hours rank session that drives you crazy because no one is talking and suddenly you get on a game, both players are responsive and willing to work together. The feeling on the win at the end of the tournament is exactly what gives us a reason to line up again. Well, imagine with a team of five consistently. That could be the element that brings back the taste of the chase. So I'm going to give this an honest chance. I'm going to believe that Embark knows what they are doing. I'm going to believe that this was the change that the game needed to take one more step towards becoming the best FPS out there. And I'm going to believe that we will have as much, if not even more fun on Terminal Attack than we have had on other modes. In the coming weeks, expect videos that will detail the strategies we started to mention today, as well as tips and tricks to help you grind up the ladder. If you don't want to miss it, know that we've only cashed out $619 so far, and we're going to need a hell of a lot more if we want to ensure victory. Smash the like button and subscribe to the channel to stay on top of everything the finals. Guys, the last thing that remains to be said is that I will see you on the next one.